And this next conversation is about navigating breast cancer as a person of color. Our guest is Michelle Audouin, who is living with metastatic breast cancer and who helped create an incredible resource in response to her experience of feeling unseen and unheard. So, Michelle, I'm so happy you're here with us today. Can you start by just telling us a bit about your story? Right. So, back in 2017, uh, I was nursing my son and I felt a lump. And I kind of sat on it for a while because my 14-year-old self, I'd already had an experience of having a breast lump removed. Mm -hmm. And from the age of 14 on, I was always looking to educate myself about breast cancer. And so it was always something lurking in the back of my mind. But I never got the answers that I needed. So I was just told, oh, you've got lumpy breasts, you've got nothing to worry about. And I'd seen specialists and nobody had really told me about my risk factors as a black woman yeah. for breast cancer. So fast forward to 2017, I was told I had the good kind. Stage zero, we caught it early. Okay. So imagine, you know, I go home and I tell my family, I've got breast cancer, but there's no need to worry about it. Yeah. But because there was a 14-year-old girl in me who needed to know more, I started to push. And I said, I need a bilateral mastectomy, which is something that they typically don't do for such an early stage breast cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And from that, uh, my, di my stage changed. They said, oh, you're stage two, but it's, it's okay. You'll be all right. And I pushed to see another specialist for radiation treatments, potentially. And as they were preparing me for radiation treatment, I got this phone call and said, we're going to put that on hold because we just realized that you have stage four breast cancer. So constant advocating for yourself and saying, actually, can I get a second opinion? Actually, can you double check that? And that was the only way you got to the conclusion of what your actual diagnosis is. Absolutely. So already we see a problem here. Yep. As a person of color, what are the biggest inequalities that you see in this healthcare system and cancer care in Canada? Right. I do like to say that in Canada, I feel fortunate, especially here in Toronto, that we have access to world-class cancer care. Mm -hmm. But it is possible to have world-class cancer care and still have unmet needs. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I need to see myself represented. And when I was making decisions about my breast reconstruction, I wanted to see women who looked like me, black women with reconstructed breasts. Mm -hmm. Because I know as a child growing up that I scar and I wanted to know how my scars were going to be managed. Yes, yeah, so keloid skin, that's keloid something skin. we don't know until we get scarred if we are going to keloid or not and how the skin is going to look and what the marks are going to be like. So it's really important to see ourselves reflected. So talk to us a little bit about specific concerns that the system was not able to address for you. Right. So. You know, the healthcare system is set up in a way that they want patients to be as well informed as possible. So mm -hmm. I thought of myself as a good patient. I was attending all these workshops, these seminars, reading all the brochures. Mm -hmm. And as I'm looking through the brochures, I'm not seeing any black women. And as I'm stepping into the, the doctor's offices and I'm asking, you know, could I see images of black reconstructed breasts? They, I would just be told, don't worry, they look better on black women anyways. But there was what no do you do proof. with that information? There was no proof. Yeah. And so I started to feel like maybe this I don't belong in this space. Maybe the decisions I'm making aren't the right decision. Mm -hmm. And that led to a depression. Depression and dissociation, you say. So you felt like sort of separated from your body. Absolutely. So once I had the breast reconstruction, I, I just couldn't come to terms with my reconstructed breast because I still had a lot of unanswered questions about the scarring and how to take care of my body. Mm -hmm. So I really only looked at my body from the chest up and the chest below, and I could never really focus on my reconstructed breasts. What helped to change that, the way you started to see your body? Because you took real initiative in that whole situation. What did you do to try and change that perception? Yeah, you know, as, as I was dealing with my depression, I turned to journaling. So every time I would have an encounter and something didn't feel right, I would turn it around and say, you know what, I wish. I wish this could happen. I wish there were access to images of women who look like me. I wish there was community support mm -hmm. for black women. And that helped me. It helped me to heal a little bit, but it was still just me on my own. Yeah. Um, and then unfortunately, you know, with the murder of George Floyd, lots of companies, lots of, you know, agencies were coming out and putting these statements about how they value diversity and Black Lives Matter. And some of it didn't ring true. Yeah. And so little by little, I started putting myself out there, sending messages, phone calls, emails, saying, you know, this wasn't my experience. And one of the people that called me back was MJ Dakota from Rethink Breast Cancer. Mm -hmm. And as I was 
offloading all of these feelings, I said, by the way, I just want to share my experience of, as a black woman navigating the breast cancer space. And I told her about my notes and how I had this dream to create a resource for women of color, black women, mm -hmm. so that they see themselves represented. And she took me up on it. She said, we can make that happen. And so that's how Uncovered was born. And so now Uncovered has been born, a resource where black women can see themselves reflected and actually see what their breasts might look like reconstructed. That was all because of you, Michelle. So give it up to her for that. You took a problem. You came up with a solution. And uh, this is phenomenal. Ooh, cover model. <laughs> Michelle, thank you so much.